Hi, Chris Bin Flintoff here. I've noticed since the general election, my subscribers have actually fallen. Uh, the number of people watching videos has fallen. Looks like YouTube's trying to reduce my um, traffic. So please share and subscribe and all those alert things, whatever they say at the beginning. If you can, it'd be good because I really want to put more stuff out that no one else is doing. Thank you. I'm here in a fantastic park in Leicester with Shoka Adam, MP. Um, last time we met, you were a candidate, and um, uh, it's great to see you. How, how are you doing? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. I, I always uh, recall you coming when I was campaigning, and I really appreciate it that uh, you made the journey, came along, saw the campaigning, uh, saw all the doors that we were knocking, all the community uh, and the wider community that were considering voting and supporting somebody different so now you've come full circle mm. and you've come back and seen us after well break. i i can't i couldn't believe the result when it came out that you'd, you'd won i mean i don't know if you were shocked or or not How, did, were you shocked to win a bit did, I, were, were you I, kind I of a bit stunned that you it was a concoction of emotions uh and i would be not telling the complete truth if i was to say that i was a little bit surprised as well myself but it was joy it was uh humility it was an honor but there was an element of, oh my God. Mm. But now you're in Parliament, uh, a month on, uh, it's a lot A lot of things have been happening in, in just a month. Um, what's your reflections on, on the past month in, in Parliament? So on a personal level, and there's a, obviously a, a national level, on a personal level, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, it's a job like no other. You don't have a job description. I've just been at the back of a grueling campaign, uh, you know, door knocking, sleepless nights, working excruciatingly hard uh, every single day for months. Then suddenly you win an election at five o'clock in the morning and at the weekend I'm in Parliament and on Tuesday I'm sitting in the House of Commons uh, exchanging glances with the Prime Minister of this country and talking to ministers and shadow cabinet ministers and cabinet ministers. It's nothing can prepare you for that. Uh, you're navigating the whole political system. You're navigating a new city. You're navigating a new workplace. Uh, so it's everything is so dynamic. Is that harder as an independent? Then? Well, I don't know anything different. I don't. So when I campaign, I campaign as an independent. That's all I know. Uh, it could be maybe easier as a uh, campaign as, as as a party member. But who knows? There may be issues that can, uh, a party member may think, gosh, I wish I was a bit independent. You, you at least right. have the leeway. So I, I don't know anything different. I've always been independent. Even my business is independent. So I've always done things uh, in, in, in the, with the vision that I've had. I can see that there'll be at least somebody telling you to go this way and that way. It might be a little bit easy, but uh, I don't know any different. And, you know, we've had in the last couple of weeks, we've had the, the far right... Um, using a kind of excuse to just attack mosques and, and innocent people. I mean, really frightening videos that we're seeing on social media, like people just are in their car being attacked by a machete or someone uh, who's caught up in, with 20 people all running after them. And I mean, can, can you... I can't get my head around it. I mean, is it something that you took you as by surprise? That, can you... Can you, did you think there was that kind of uh, violence out there? Yeah, so did, before I answer that question, I just want to say this, that we must always go back to the fact that three innocent souls, beautiful children have lost their life, mindlessly. Usually a situation of that nature, in my opinion, should bring communities, should bring the country, country together. That is, that, is, that is so heartbreaking that we, we try to understand how has this happened? We grieve with, with the families, we grieve with South, uh, Southport, and that should have brought us together. Instead, it made us go the other way. And that doesn't happen overnight. This, for me, is systematic uh, racism, xenophobia, and Islamophobia that came into play. And that has been breeding for now possibly over decades. Okay, so when I first spoke to you, Chris, when you said to me, what had motivated me to start? I don't know if you, you can play it back. It was the fact, the rhetoric around Brexit, 
was the first uh, indication that, you know, all is not well here. And it wasn't whether you voted for or as a Remain or against. That was not the politics. It was the narrative. Now, who was in control of this narrative? It was our politicians. It was our media. It was our social media. Okay. All of these things, three things, people were saying things that I just couldn't believe uh, I was hearing out loud in this country that I love. You know, the, the, the rhetoric of the invasion, the hordes, people are going to come from Turkey, who weren't even part of the European Union, they're going to come and invade our country. This narrative all feeds in. Uh, the rise of Islamophobia has been blatant. When, when Boris Johnson decided to stand uh, as the leader of the Tory party, he, he almost launched his bid on the back of, uh, of, of, of addressing Muslim women who, whatever you think of it, wearing the niqab, it's their choice as bank robbers and post uh, and letterboxes. Uh, and that went almost unchallenged. There was, there was no political consequences. Subsequently, in recent times, and there's been so many other examples, we've had a home secretary, uh, a previous home secretary, talking about um, Islamists taking over certain parts of our country. Now, most people don't even know what the word Islamist means. They just hear the word Islam, Islam. What does it mean? I'm sure the people who talk about Islamists may not be able to know. Then we had uh, Lee Anderson, who was then, uh, was it the vice chairman of the Tory party? Uh, calling out Sadiq Khan as being controlled by Islamists again. So there's this constant narrative. Then you have some, uh, say, the rhetoric against uh, immigrants. You have uh, rhetoric, rhetoric against uh, people of, 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 of Eastern European descent. Then you had, just before the election, uh, my predecessor and the prime minister of our country talking about Bangladeshis, uh, you know, uh, coming to this country and residing in hotels forever. You know, all of these narratives feed in uh, to to this uh, emotion that we saw outpouring of, it didn't matter that the person that we now know that allegedly killed these three uh, young, young, beautiful ch children was not a Muslim and was not an immigrant. But it, it was, it didn't seem to matter. The truth seemed to be sacrificed. People were so uh, riled up with their racist uh, emotions that they galvanized through social media, through all the other avenues that they use, and, and therefore we saw it displayed in, in, in its all, it's, all, it's uh, glorious or unglorious technically, I should say. Yeah, and um, on Wednesday night, we saw a lot of people going out to, to counter those people and they seemed to um, outnumber them by hundreds to one or thousands to one in some uh, cases. Do you think that this is the, that, that support from uh, people for those mosques and and community centres that were being attacked. Do you think that's a sign that um, this might be over or do you think we should continue to be vigilant? What we saw is the worst and we saw the best of Great Britain. Uh, you know, I've always often said this, the amount of negative media uh, reporting, whether it's print or television or radio uh, and social media you have against, say, Muslims uh, and, and, and people of colour or, or minorities, Yet the majority of the people of this country are kind, are wel welcoming and warm. And that was exemplified, that people came out and said virtually not in our names. Uh, and that is what's made a difference. That's the first part. Second part, we cannot be complacent. This is by no means over. Uh, we must continue to work together. We must address the issue of Islamophobia and give it the, the credence and the, the, uh, the severity and the gravitas it, it deserves. Because if we do not, it, another incident is going to happen and we are going to then be uh, facing the same issue again and just say it does happen that the next time it was a Muslim individual. You know, who has not, he will have committed that crime for no, for nothing to do with his faith. Uh, and, and yet that will be exploited again by those in the far right that wish to cause discord in our country uh, and, and, and take us down a path that none of us want to see. Do you think um, in this situation, that the Labour Party is uh, is as responsible as as anyone else for for the rhetoric and for the the kind of climate that we've se that seen um, Muslims attacked and, and and ordinary people attacked. Do you think the Labour? Do you think, for example, we, uh, your your predecessor as as MP? Do you think what he said was inflammatory? I think what we have what we have to hold the Labour Party to account that, that maybe they could have been a lot more vocal against uh, forms of racism, Islamophobia, etc. 
So my concern has always been this. During Brexit, we saw a real xenophobic uh, rhetoric arise from uh, UKIP, etc. Therefore, the Tory party, in fear of their political lives and positions, and in order to attract them, they decided to join in at the narrative of virtually what UKIP was saying, to say, look, we, look, everybody's concerned about immigration. It's the, it's, it's the language that you use. It's, I mentioned that in my maiden speech as well. You know, we must always be considerate and cautious and, and really, really, really careful in the words that we use, because our words in, in positions of power really has an effect. So the Tory party decided to go right. At that particular point, the Labour Party should have stayed where it was or gone left and say, no, we are not going to use the same language uh, for people who are seeking shelter in our country, uh, are seeking uh, uh, safety in our country for, for, for global wars that we may have been involved in uh, as a cause. Yet they then decided to join that narrative as well. You know, yes, we have to have sensible conversations about these things. So I think to answer your question, they could have done uh, a lot more to ensure that we didn't we didn't see the situation that we saw last week. What, can you tell us what kind of uh, organising you're doing together? What the independent MPs are doing together? What, what what do you see? How do you see the future for this? Yeah, so this it's group been, of independent. Yeah, as MPs? you say, it's only been four weeks. I'm still navigating my way into, in, in Parliament, uh, finding my way, getting to know my colleagues, uh, so to speak. I I wasn't um, I didn't know any of them before. Fourth of July, uh, which is like we got to, we're getting to know each other uh, uh, every day uh, whilst we are in Parliament. Look, it's a uh, fluid situation. Uh, we are in you know close proximity where we sit. We we discuss things, uh, and there is you know at this moment in time, it would be too early to say what this is going to look like. Uh, if there's going to be any form of for formal coalition or formal grouping, but you know there's potential of of possibility of at this moment in time anything's on the table look i i came on is i was going to serve the constituents of my uh, my, my constituents of my city and, and i will always look at what is going to be best for them uh, i'm not in there in this for any personal agenda it's going to be what's going to be the best for the people of lesser south and what's going to be the best for the country uh, and and if that looks better together then that may be the case if it looks better in the, individually then that would be the case. I just want to ask you one other question. Uh, are you are you up for uh, watching Fulham against Leicester? My team for, uh, against Leicester. Will you come and, and watch it, and we'll we'll do a after match uh, report on it? Yeah, as long as you you're not a sore loser. I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs>